Hello everyone and assalamu alaikum. So this is the seventh lecture of the course uh, which is called Challenge Networks. So as the name suggests, the networks that we're going to learn today have various cha challenges uh, concerned to various functionalities. For example, it might be routing, uh, it might be communicating while moving, it might be the mobility. So any functionality of the network uh, which is very difficult to perform due to the scenario or the environment uh, these type of networks fall under challenge networks and we are specifically about to, uh, are about to learn two types of uh, challenge networks so the first one is uh, delay tolerant network or DTN so the core functionality of a communication network is routing which is uh, taking up uh, receiving a packet or a message and determining it, uh, to forward uh, determining who to forward it to for example, it might be connected, the, the router might be connected to many different devices or networks uh, or routers like itself and deciding who to forward it to. And the next thing is finding a path from a source to some destination. So uh, you might be confused about the two things as they might seem similar, but actually finding a path from a source to some destination is from a broader perspective. So uh, routing is only deciding who to forward the packet to. So it's a, in a very shorter area and uh, compared to that finding a path from a source to a destination means uh, to find out the entire path through which the packet has to travel. So traditional routing solutions to these uh, functionalities or uh, solutions which show how to perform these uh, assume that there exists an end-to-end -end path between the communicating nodes. So we already assume that there is a source and a destination and they are connected somehow. This means there is at least one path from the source to destination. Otherwise, it's not possible to find the path or route the uh, packet accordingly, right? But delay or disruption tolerant networks, uh, for, uh, for example, DTNs, uh, in their case, communication is possible even if the end-to-end -end connectivity is never achievable. That means there is no direct path from the source to destination. So how is it uh, done? It is done exploiting the node's mobility, right? So the nodes in, the, in this sort of network are usually moving and they follow a technique called the store carry forward, right? So using the store carry forward uh, fashion, uh, they can uh, forward messages from a source to destination even if there is no end-to-end -end connectivity now this might seem confusing but we're going to explain this a little so a uh, communications network uh, which is designed to withstand long delays or outages it can be called a delay tolerant network or DTN so it is capable of storing packets in intermediate nodes that means nodes in the path until such time as an end-to-end -end route can be established so i think you can get the idea somewhat if you were confused be, uh, regarding it before so when a node needs to send a message to another node if that node is within that range it directly sends it otherwise it waits and carries that uh, message until the node is available which is why this is called a store a uh, uh, carry forward uh, technique so this is a traditional uh, network and as we can see the source and the destination are marked here so this is the source and this is the destination and we are assuming that this path is the shortest path from the source to destination so the message will be sent accordingly so as you can see the first data is sent to the uh, immediate node that means the neighboring node then the next data is sent and so on until the packet reaches the destination right so this is how traditional routing works uh, when we already have the paths connected and we determine the path uh, or route which which will be which we will take to forward the data and the data is then passed on accordingly right so if there's a failure in in let's say this path then the data can be sent through another path right so this is how traditional routing works now in case of DTN routing things are different for example in this case this is the source and this is the destination right so there are two other intermediate nodes but the range between them is too much right so this node cannot pass message to this node because it's too far away and as we can see there are no links here which means this is actually a wireless network so if that node gets into the range of this network uh, sorry this node only then the message can be forwarded so initially the source forwards the message to the um, nearest node because this is within its range so the data is sent 
now this particular node does not find the node which it requires to send the data to so it stores the message or stores the data now it carries the data until it finds uh, the node which uh, it has to send to which means this node can also move while holding the data uh, now this node which is also mobile when it comes in front or in range of the particular node that means uh, within the range of this node then it can forward the data accordingly so now this data is being sent to this node and eventually this node can also send the data to the destination so this is how actual DTN routing works so I, I think now you can clearly understand how the store carry and forward uh, is done when uh, routing in the DTN scenario so th this is another example which explains properly how a uh, DTN works and this is a real life or uh, a real scenario so this bag bagel or this is actually a food uh, which is sort of like a donut but it's softer than a donut so the, d uh, the bagel is a source of the food, right? So this can be considered as a source and the destination can be considered the ants, uh, the ants here, so their home or their ant hill can be considered the destination, okay? So the ants carry the sugar or part of the food of the bagel. So usually bagels are made of a lot of sugar and bread. So the ants carry the sugar or part of uh, this bread uh, to their ant home. So how do they carry it? They, the one ant takes uh, a part of it and then relays it or gives it to the other ant, right? So in this case as well, even if let's say there is no ant surrounding this ant, for example, even then it will wait or it will find another ant and then pass it to that ant. So as you can see here in this scenario, even if there is no ant surrounding the one carrying the food particle, the food particle is not lost. The same occurs in case of DTNs. So these are some of the challenges of DTNs. The first one as uh, we can already see which is packet loss due to transmission errors. So transmission errors is high as it is a wireless network and also as the nodes or both of the nodes are always moving. So there are frequent disconnections as well because the, uh, the neighboring node might move out of range and then might again uh, join uh, the network by coming into the range so uh, there's frequent disconnections and also frequent connections so there is also limited communication bandwidth which is a common wireless uh, problem because uh, all of the networks or all of the nodes are using an uh, unlicensed spectrum which is used for uh, wireless communication and as the nodes are moving uh, continuously the topology is also a problem because topology and routes are always changing and it's dynamic so the DTN also has to consider this thing. Then uh, uh, the applications that are using uh, the uh, delay tolerant network do not know that the, uh, the, uh, the uh, devices are moving and they also do not know whether there is a connection or disconnection. The, the applications always send a message without caring about anything. It is the work of the protocol uh, to consider that uh, whether there's a disconnection or whether uh, the uh, the uh, device is actually moving or not so it is the work of the protocol so as a result the protocol also has to consider that the application will be waiting for a message and will also send a message uh, disregarding whether the device is moving or not or whether there is a connection or disconnection or not and as the, mo uh, the devices are mobile there's also the problem of short battery life and due to short battery life there is also limited uh, capacity of memory and also processing okay so this is these two uh, problems are also there in wireless sensor networks so I think you already understand how they can uh, be a big problem so these are some applications of uh, delay tolerant networks the first one is loss of communication during disasters for example hurricanes tsunami earthquakes and even in case of let's say terrorist attacks so whenever hurricanes or tsunamis occur they actually take a lot of uh, houses and uh, a lot of people even together with them so they destroy the shoreline or the area where the tsunami attacks in a great uh, magnitude so what happens is uh, many devices or many wireless devices in that area might be lost so due to loss of these devices uh, 
the other nodes cannot forward their packets as a result they have to store those okay so this is one example of uh, application of delayed tolerant networks as the nodes can be lost due to these uh, disasters and also in case of terrorist attacks if you have already seen some examples in let's say movies or uh, or any other games even so the terrorists usually attack the communication centers right because they are very vital uh, if there is no communication then no one can know the situation of an area which uh, which scenario is actually used by the terrorists so that they can have a prolonged operation in that area so in this scenario also the nodes which are uh, which use the area in attack as a source or as a, a destination or even as an intermediary node so in this scenario the other nodes which have uh, lost this link have to store the data and forward it later on so even in this case uh, DTN can be used and another example is vehicular networks okay so so cars or buses usually carry a lot of people even and also a lot of uh, devices within them it can be a mobile or it can be a computer someone using a computer sitting on the car or even the system of the car can be considered as a node right so we're going to uh, see uh, more about vehicular networks later on and next is interplanetary communication so this is actually the first scenario where DTN was proposed and DTN was started to be realized by people so what happened is uh, the satellites or uh, the shuttles launched by NASA right so they usually uh, carried a lot of data and whenever they came in contact with another uh, device uh, which which could potentially carry that data they used to forward the data for example it might be a stationary satellite or it might be another shuttle and so on right so and and even they needed to use the internet so they also need an internet connection which is why this uh, DTN was proposed first in 1998 and uh, a new uh, uh, concept came to be which is interplanetary internet or interplanetary network uh, IPN so this can be another example of DTN and also another example can be wildlife monitoring so the zebra net which which was also a wireless sensor network and we have already seen it right so the zebra net consists of uh, zebras which carry the nodes as their collar or maybe some other accessory right so even the zebra nodes, uh, if there is no other zebra within their vicinity, they cannot pass the messages or they cannot pass the data, right? So they also have to store the data until they find an, an applicable or a suitable uh, node near them. So wildlife monitoring can also be an example of DTN network. So now we're going to see an example of DTN, DTN network and this uh, is uh, the vehicular ad hoc network or VANET okay so vehicular ad hoc network is a subclass of mobile ad hoc network and it contains all the things which is present in a uh, MANET because uh, the vehicles are mobile and also they form an ad hoc network so devices are embedded in moving vehicles uh, which work as the nodes and nowadays this is very common because most uh, cars actually have various applications already installed in them for example it might be a GPS or it might be uh, uh, an application which can you know browse through the internet and show uh, videos or or, uh, or uh, maybe uh, audio so this is a network which is constrained by very fast topology changes because the cars as uh, cars are very fast and which is why the nodes have very high mobility and also as it is an ad hoc network and there is no infrastructure it's a wireless multi-hop network as well which is a characteristics of VANET and and uh, it can also connect to other networks for example it can connect to the wide area network which is uh, let's say the mobile network so someone carrying a mobile in a, a car can also be considered as a node as I've already said and it, it also needs to use internet right so there's various units called roadside units present in the road or maybe beside the road which provide internet connection to traveling cars so this is an example scenario and as we can see this is the roadside unit that we were talking about and this is the WiMAX or 3G or it can be a WiMAX or a 3G base station or a 4G base station so it can be a wide area network so as you can see the wide area network can directly connect 
to the car or if the car is actually far away it can connect to the RSU and the RSU in turn can connect to uh, the car or vehicle and the vehicles can also communicate with other vehicles okay and as you can see there the satellite is also drawn here but this doesn't mean the satellite is actually very near this only means that the cars also have GPS installed so they also communicate with the satellite otherwise they cannot get that GPS right so there are three types of communication here the red ones are inter vehicle communication the blue ones are vehicle to roadside communication or vehicle to any other uh, device which pro which can connect it to the internet and the blue ones are inter roadside communication that means the static uh, devices so the communication between the static devices are the green ones okay so the cars which are moving here they also need GPS so that they can find the location of other cars and they also need internet connection uh, so that it can provide the users inside the car with different facilities okay so there is a lot of uh, applications that might be installed in a car or uh, with devices which are inside a car so these are some of the issues and challenges uh, which uh, Vanet faces as we have already said Vanet is actually a type of uh, challenge network right so that it has various challenges the first one is scalability so scalability means the network has to be able to deal with the change in the number of nodes in the network and as Vanet is uh, concerned with cars so it can be that there are no cars in an area and very quickly it might be that that car has now gone to an area that uh, where there are so many cars and it might be a traffic jam even right so vanet can lead to very high density and very low density very quickly which leads to broadcast storm problems so whenever uh, one node broadcasts so uh, it's a broadcasting message so every other node might broadcast and it causes a storm of packets right so this is one problem uh, and the next one is security and trust so due to cooperative driving which means actually the nodes uh, in a vanet communicate with each other uh, on a regular basis right so security is often not considered in travel comfort applications because in in case of those applications the comfort is much more necessary compared to security but this actually causes a problem because whenever uh, there is a breach of trust or a security problem it gets very dangerous for example someone might control that car wirelessly and this might even cause the car uh, to malfunction and if it has autopilot or even if if the hardware is connected to the software in that car then the steering or other uh, hardware might be made to malfunction or might be controlled by some other person so it is, it is a very dangerous scenario which is why security is a big problem when uh, considering applications in Vanet then the next thing next challenge is quality of service so different applications have different quality of service uh, for example GPS uh, has a low quality of service compared to let's say video streaming or uh, audio right so as there are various different kinds of applications present in uh, in a vehicle so quality of service has to be managed in different ways the next thing is node cooperation so as there is uh, co uh, communication between the devices in a vanet so a vanet actually assumes that uh, the other nodes will cooperate with the current node but this might not be the case because the other uh, car might be selfish and might be uh, might not provide a connection to the current uh, vehicle that we're talking about so in this scenario the current vehicle might be uh, far away from a uh, network or internet and that car which is selfish might be its only uh, way to connect to the internet so even these scenarios must be, must, must be taken into consideration and the last is simulation so as uh, the nodes are very fast moving and the scenarios are very different as I've already said there are various challenges it is also very difficult to simulate a vanet as there are various factors involved so these are the uh, references that I followed the first one is uh, the the interplanetary communication that has that I was talking about and it was this uh, paper was published in 2003 and you can have a read it's very interesting uh, as uh, this is the origin of uh, uh, DTN uh, which was in 1998 and I think the person uh, of NAF NASA uh, who was it I, I I can't remember I think it is this author okay so this is the author who first 
uh, started talking about GTN okay and the second one is just a reference which uh, shows vehicle ad hoc networks okay so this is the end of today's lecture and as usual if you have any questions please please feel free to ask uh, with this I'm going to end this lecture assalamualaikum everyone